The Manufacturers Association of Nigeria CEO Confidence Index rose by 1.7 points in the first quarter of this year, marking the first increase in the last six quarters. Now, this index is used to measure quarterly changes in the sentiment of 400 manufacturing CEOs regarding government policies and macroeconomic indicators. Man President Otumba Francis Meshoye reported a moderate improvement in the aggregate index score, which increased from 51.8 points in the last quarter of 2023 to 53.5 points. However, Meshoye noted that current business and, on and employment conditions remain below the 50-point uh, average threshold due to rising inflation, escalating energy costs, exchange rate instability, and fluctuating customs duty rate, particularly in January and February. He emphasized that manufacturing sector's critical role in sustained economic growth and shared uh, prosperity, stressing that there is need for policymakers to prioritize its development. Well, I have a research analyst at the Lagos uh, Business School Management Hub, Edidiong, equal to joining me now to discuss further. Good morning to you, Edidiong. Thanks for joining us on Business Insights. Yeah, good morning, Justin. Thanks for having me. All right, a whole lot is happening in the Nigerian manufacturing space, but it seems as though we are not there yet. Will a whole lot of challenges uh, bedeviling the country? Uh, in the last uh, uh, the statistics that we reviewed, uh, that was uh, you know put out for the first quarter, it is actually uh, slowing down in growth, uh, declining um, from 1.61 percent in the first quarter of um, last year to about 1.49 percent in the corresponding period of this year. What exactly would you say uh, mitigating all of these issues uh, in the manufacturing sector? Um, I, I think that the major issue with Nigeria's manufacturing sector is that. Um, there's this antithesis between what the government is saying and what the government is doing. Okay, I, I've said this many times that the key to any prosperous economy is a strong manufacturing sector. I think m most of the countries in Asia discover this early. That's why you see um, China, you see Korea. I mean, these guys have been very intentional about uh, uh, um, having a very strong and boisterous manufacturing sector. So uh, with, in the Nigerian situation, unfortunately, what the government sees and what the government does, with because every government always comes aboard and says, we have this industrialization drive. But it's not just about saying it. What is your plan? What is the plan of action that you have? That, okay, you want Nigerian goods to stand shoulder to shoulder with its Chinese counterpart with regard to quality and with regard to price. So unfortunately for us, that um, plan of action is what has always been absent. All right, uh, looking at all that is happening now, we are talking about incentivizing uh, you know, local manufacturers so we can enhance growth and of course uh, grow the country. But in all of this, you have talked about government policies and um, actions being at um, uh, disparity. So. Where do we even begin to start? We have the challenge of um, rising costs uh, uh, due to a uh, high cost of borrowing. We have the challenge of uh, multi-taxation, electricity, even uh, infrastructure generally. So where do we even begin to start in the immediacy? Well, it's, it's like you just said, it's all about incentives, really. Uh, and let me just uh, give you a statistic that you're probably aware of, which should blow anyone's mind. This year alone, the customs duty exchange rate has changed nearly 10 times, if not more than 10 times. Okay? The customs duty rates today, of course, as we know, it's above 1,500. Okay? We go back to incentives yet again. So when a government says we are going to boost uh, industrialization, for me, the fundamental basis of this should be energy. You cannot say we are going to boost industrialization when we are having uh, uh, um, the kind of mess that we have in the power sector today. If there's any way you can sort out even the manufacturers as a matter of priority. Let me tell you something, um, Justin. Did you know that with the recent increase in electricity tariff, Nigerian manufacturers will pay 56 times more than what their Chinese counterparts are paying. 
So at the end of the day, you have Nigerian textile in the market. You have Chinese textile in the market. You are buying the Chinese textile, apparently, because it's far cheaper than the Nigerian textile. The guy in Nigeria has to buy diesel, 1,500, to power his, uh, his machines, okay, because he doesn't have power supply, okay? He has to pay through the nose for the power supply that he's not even getting. And like I said before, 56 times more, if you calculate it, what his Chinese counterpart is paying. So at the end of the day, like I said, the antithesis. So, you know, I, I always say that it's impossible for any uh, government to solve all the problems in the economy within the lifespan. The lifespan of any government is too short. It's only four years. Okay? So I always advocate a situation whereby a particular government can pick a particular problem and say, we are going to solve the problem of power. We are going to solve the problem of uh, um, multiple taxation. But you find a government that's trying to do everything all at once. It, it cannot work. Okay, so it goes down to incentives. When the government is serious about having a boisterous manufacturing sector, then we'll, we'll start seeing um, maybe special forex window for manufacturers, for instance. We will start seeing special uh, um, power um, uh, uh, um, allocation to manufacturers. Manufacturers have been crying about the um, current um, uh, price verification portal. It's a bottleneck, you know, for manufacturers. The government has refused to do anything about it. And uh, let me tell you something else. We have manufacturers that have forex forwards with the CVM that have been with the CVM for almost two years. So, Justin, imagine paying for raw material for uh, um, a foreign supplier, for instance, and the, um, the material has been supplied, and the foreign bank has paid that supplier. You, the local manufacturer, you are supposed to reimburse that foreign bank in a matter of 90 days. Two years later, you are still owing the same forex. Two years later, you are still paying interest on that loan. <laughs> so at the end of the day, do you think the foreign supplier will give more uh, raw materials on credit? He's not going to. So these are the issues that our local manufacturers are going through. Some of them have forex uh, forwards that have been hanging for more than two years. The CBN is saying this one is valid, this one is not valid, and the manufacturers have presented all the evidence that these were valid transactions with the local banks who were supposed to work hand in hand with the foreign suppliers and foreign banks to get raw material. So, I mean, if we start talking about the issues <laughs> that manufacturers are going, I mean, we probably wouldn't live here today. So, like I said, the government needs to start walking the talk. It's not just about saying we are going to push industrialization. We need a solid plan of action as to how they're going to do that. other things now because uh, even uh, Africa's uh, largest um, you know uh, <laughs> what I call it a man you know Dangote has also complained about all of these issues you know specifically power how most uh, uh, manufacturers uh, industrial um, um, companies have to even provide your own power even like the government is bereft of knowledge on what to do because one would have thought with um, all the Forms that we've had in the power sector, the unbundling of NEPA, PHCN, and all of that, and now for state government to be able to, you know, get one would have thought that maybe there should be some sort of um, public-private um, participation in some sort to, you know, get into the power sector because without power, really, businesses die. Yeah, but uh, I, I want to go back to the Dangote issue you spoke about. I think I saw it in the news. Sometime last night or thereabouts, Dangote was even saying he's ready for NMPT to buy him out. Mm. That, uh, you know, the refinery issue is becoming uh, uh, um, a thorn in his flesh. So the first thing that came to my mind, I was, I was literally screaming into my screen, as if speaking to Dangote, please do not allow the NMPC to buy you out. Because we haven't seen 
anything that the government controls in this country that is of standard. You go back, is it the healthcare the sector? Is it education? The government institutions are always the worst of the worst. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's sad that I have to sit down here to castigate the government in this manner. But if you look at the government institutions versus private, you see a declared difference. Okay. So um, going to the power issue you, that you talk about, I think that the key is just um, uh, to, to privatize. So we've seen the privatization of uh, uh, the power generation. We've seen privatization of distribution. But the gap that exists there is, is um, transmission, which is the problem right now. So we need a situation where if we can privatize our power sector completely, then we will begin to see the kind of exponential growth that we saw in telecoms. Okay, because because of competition, it's 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 difficult to to have a private sector controlled power industry that will not be functional, that will not yield better results. Okay, so the key for me, I think the government needs to. Uh, um, you know, step down, you know, from the stage and allow private, you know, sector to have, you know, just this absolute, I, I don't want to use the word control, but if we are to see real growth in our power sector, then we need the kind of uh, 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 um, situation that we saw in telecoms. Otherwise, you know, we'll keep having the same conversation, conversations all the time. All right, let's talk about other incentives now that we need to look at. We've talked about the issues in power, we've talked about multiple taxation, and in as much as uh, sometimes the manufacturers called for, call for tax holidays and all that. Uh, recently now there's the issue of um, you know minimum wage, which was increased to 70,000 at some uh, members of the organized private sector are also complaining that it will actually add to their, you know, to their burden, as it were, in terms of cost. Now, so what other areas do we need to look at in terms of incentives to boost the uh, local production? Uh, over time, there have been talk about uh, raw materials, uh, you know, for for production. So, what are the other key areas you think we should do, should look at critically in uh, boosting local production? Well, the incentives for me, I, I think, should begin with where we have competitive advantage. I think that's one of the problems that the Nigerian uh, uh, manufacturing industry has, you know, really refused to identify. For instance, um, I think earlier this year, we saw the Minister of Trade and Industry come out to say that within the next few years, Nigeria will start manufacturing um, cars locally. And we're not just talking about assembly, but you know, complete manufacturing of um, automobiles. So, and I ask the question, what is really um, um, the framework that you have in place for this? Will we have a situation whereby after we have finished manufacturing one car, because of the operating cost, um, uh, we'll probably have to buy uh, um, a car that is within the neighborhood of maybe a Toyota uh, uh, Corolla for 25 million naira, who is going to buy it? So that is the issue that we have. Innocent is manufacturing, but Nigerians cannot afford this car. Even the government cannot afford to buy from Innocent. You know, uh, the, the, the um, automobile uh, uh, wing of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria has have constantly complained that one of the key issues that they have is lack of government patron. So, fine, there's a plan for us to begin to manufacture, uh, for manufacture cars in Nigeria, okay? But what key uh, uh, strategies that do you have in place that at the end of the day, when this car has been uh, you know, produced, it will be affordable in the local market, which is the, 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 the number one issue that we have with a lot of locally manufactured goods. They are too expensive, far more, because the guy in China is buying uh, electricity six times less than you are buying. So he comes with, with his uh, product, and Nigerians prefer to buy that one. So the incentive for me should be, okay, we want to manufacture cars. Fine. Let us have a situation whereby some of the key components 
that will be um, imported, maybe raw materials and, you know, the lab with us. It's not a situation where the guy is still paying the same duties he's paying like everyone else. So we need to see across the board, the government needs to come up with the slogan, how can we help? I, you know, I think that is just um, basically the sum of it. If the government can come up with a slogan, this is what you want to produce. How can we help? Honestly, honestly, it's not a uh, uh, um, white elephant project or things that you just push out in the media as PR for publicity. Okay. Okay, let's let's drop so, our let's drop our last um, last word here now. As we round off um, for sake of time, MPC is meeting and uh, issue of um, uh, you know in uh, cost of uh, funds uh, will actually be brought to bear. Now this has been a major bane to uh, you know SMEs, even manufacturers. That's a uh, cost of uh, borrowing funds to boost production. Now, so what should we be looking at now? What are your expectations as the MPC meets uh, in uh, vis a vis uh, how it will affect um, the manufacturers? Okay, um, just in the last three time, uh, in the last three years, whenever the MPC have met, it has always been one outcome. Mm. The increase in the benchmark borrowing mm. uh, interest rate. And of course, this has always been a, a response to the fact that um, I think in the last 29 months, or in the last 30 months, inflation has increased about 29 times. The only month that inflation did not increase within the last, in fact, since COVID, was December 2022. You can do your findings. That was the only month, and it was quite surprising. I mean, in a festive period, um, the NB, uh, uh, National Bureau of Statistics came out and said that inflation did, be, did not increase in December 2022, and we believe them. But in the last 30 months, that is the only month that inflation did not increase. So um, it has always been business as usual for the MPC whenever they meet to increase the benchmark interest rate. And to, to, to ask the question, I mean, when you try a particular strategy, a particular uh, course of action and it doesn't work, I think it begs the question, why not try something else? Because um, for how long really are you going to keep in, uh, increasing uh, 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 interest rates? Interest rate today is hovering around somewhere within the vicinity of 25%, which we know when you go to the bank, you will not even get that 25%. So again, it's counterproductive to the real sector of the economy when you keep having these rate hikes because the SMEs, the, uh, um, the manufacturing companies, are just unable to, to get, at, and that takes us to another big problem that manufacturers are facing, which is access to credit. So I, I implore the MPC to um, really see how they can re-strategize. Uh, I mean, I've heard many times that that is the only tool that is available to them to curb inflation, but it's not working. I think that it's high time that they try a different way. We must uh, drop the anchor at this particular point. Uh, we must uh, bring you back to look at all the access of food is actually critical. It's one issue that we need to look at also uh, to boost uh, local production, be it um, manufacturers and of course some um, SMEs. I have been speaking with some Edith Young Ipoto Research Analyst, Lagos Business School Management Hub, and we have been looking at the manufacturing sector vis-a-vis -vis incentivizing them for uh, local production. Thank you so much, Edith Young, for your time. Thank you very much, Justin. All right, that's the sound of the show for today. I am Justin Adoni. Many thanks for being around. See you again later.